Welcome, 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 everybody. Welcome to another no code blockchain tutorial. Today, we're going to be talking about how to authenticate and connect to users' wallets. Actually, I should say how to connect and authenticate using users' wallets uh, and MetaMask. So it's, uh, and of course, we're using Bubble the no code platform bubble. And let me just share my screen here. And uh, we're going to be using a plugin from the easy code plugin team. They make plugins and templates easy code does for bubble, the no code platform bubble, and they make a bunch of these different web three related blockchain related plugins. And uh, a lot of these are great. I'm just working my way through all these. And, uh, you know, if you just scroll around through their plugins, you can get lots of different ideas for how you can use these. But today we're going to be using the Web3 and MetaMask plugin from EasyCode. This plugin is going to allow us to do everything we need to do to connect users to our application using their MetaMask wallet. Before we start, I just want to also say, uh, yeah, also check out their website, EasyCode's website. They have great documentation for all their plugins. And they also have demos for their plugins. And I wanted to use this, this tutorial as an opportunity just to show you how you can get the uh, functionality directly from the demos for a lot of these plugins, the base functionality that's used in a lot of different apps is uh, in these demos and you can just open the editor for the demo and just take this functionality, copy and paste this functionality essentially from the demo. And this is a, a uh, connect and authenticate demo that the easy code team has on their, in their documentation. So check that out because a lot of this workflow, I got my original workflow from them. I have changed it just ever so slightly. And what you'll see today is that we're going to be making a reusable header. So it's a little bit different than their demo, but we're going to be making a reusable header that allows us to uh, track if users are connected to, uh, across all the pages on our app or website and to uh, allow them to log in and sign up on, on any page in our website using this reusable header. So that's what we're going to be making. And uh, it, so we're taking some of this demo functionality and we're, we're kind of adding to it. And let me actually give you an example of exactly what we're building. Oh, let me refresh it real quick. This is the universal header I'm talking about. Uh, in our case, we've got our logo here on the left side, and we've got a connect wallet button. When you click connect wallet, this MetaMask notification pops up, asks if I want to sign this request. It's totally free to do, but uh, asking if I'll sign this request saying, yes, I will connect to this app. What's great is you can have users uh, accept your website's privacy policy or whatever else you want to do in this signature. So I'll just click sign on this transaction signature. And now you can see we're logged in. It shows my wallet here. And if we click this button again, we've just built in for now the functionality to log us out and disconnect our wallet from this app. So, uh, and then if we want to, we can log right back in. So this is essentially what we're building, and this is going to allow us to have our users log in and sign up to our website without needing to use an email. I don't know if you noticed, but I didn't use an email, and I got logged into this website. And you'll see how we do that here in just a second in the workflow. So let's get back there. So let me make this full screen, and we're just going to go up here, and we're going to click Add New Reusable Element. And we're just going to call this our header. Demo is what we're going to call it. And I'm going to just make it a blank new reusable element. Let's start with the design. Okay. So we're going to go to the design tab and we're going to try to first just make this look like what we want it to look like. Right. So follow along, my friends. We're going to, oh, not two conditions. Oh, actually, the first. So the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to upgrade this element to the new responsive engine. The responsive engine is so much better for so many reasons I'm not even going to get into in this video. 
Okay, now we're going to start editing this design. We're going to go over and we're going to change our container layout to row, and you will see why here soon. This is group. I like to, for width, I like to personally do 1,200. That's, uh, I just, I just like, really like using that width. For minimum height, I'm going to go uh, 100. And for the background color, I'm doing straight black, flat color, straight black. Now we're going to add our logo image here. I'm just adding an image element from the visual elements tab. And let me go over to my, I've got the, uh, the URL because I already uploaded mine for the demo. I have the URL of the asset, so I'm just doing it there. But you can click here to upload your own logo if that's what you want to do. And you can see, look at that, our logo just popped up. Yay, yay, yay. For layout, I'm going to go here and I'm going to vertically align this in the center. And then I'm going to make this a fixed width element uh, at 100 here. And I'm going to keep the aspect ratio 1 to 1 because our logo is a nice square and i'm going to put a little padding oh i'm going to put 20 pixels of padding on the left there to just give it a little breathing room from the the edge of this group now i'm going to add a group let's see i'm going to add a group here whoa 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 it went a little crazy and added a couple groups for me i don't need that many groups I just need one. I don't know if any that bubble this to anyone else sometimes, but sometimes bubble gives me a lot of more groups than I really bargained for. And uh, this group, I'm also going to have be, this one be a row, but I'm going to have the alignment be right aligned. Okay. And uh, I'm going to do vertical alignment. This is really annoying me how the minimum height here. And for minimum height, I'm just going to say that uh, actually I should make that at least 50 just for now. And the fixed width is not what I'm going to do, but let's do this. At minimum, let's just say 100, and then we'll give it the max width. And then we will, on the right side, give it a little padding like we gave to the logo. And I think that's going to do it. We're going to call this group Wallet Buttons. Okay. Okay. So now in my wallet buttons group, I'm going to add, I know this is a big shocker. I'm going to add a button. Okay. So we're going to put a button here and we're going to call this, we're going to say connect wallet. So this is our connect wallet button. I'm going to remove the default styling because I'm just feeling like we are going in a custom direction here. Uh, I actually know for a fact we're going in a custom design direction on this wallet. We're going to beef that up. We're going to get rid of that. We're making it just a super square, super squared off button. Lots of right angles going on on this button. Okay. And for our layout, we're going to center, center a vertical alignment in it. A vertical alignment. Can I speak? We'll see. And uh, yeah, it'll be fixed width and um, it'll be fixed height. We'll make it, let's just see what's 40 look like. I like 40, I like 40, maybe 45. It's kind of, you know, whatever suits your taste, 40 is fine. And uh, this is gonna be our connect bu wallet button. Now we do, uh, this is just like some default uh, conditional design thing. I'm just gonna remove just to make things a little cleaner. And we are going to say, though, when the uh, current user is logged out, then uh, this uh, element will be visible because we don't want this just to be visible on page load. We're also going to collapse it when hidden. Uh, we just don't want this to be visible on page load necessarily if... Uh, the user isn't logged in because then it'll show up maybe for a second while it's loading. It's just kind of a little messy. I don't know. It's a personal thing. Okay. So the button connect wallet is going to only show when the user is logged out. And you'll also kind of see why we're going to hide it 
uh, when the user's logged in because all the functionality for logging in, connecting is baked into that. And when they're logged in and connected, we don't need them to try to do that process again. And we're going to have this other button uh, that we're going to make right now, right meow. This button is also, this button is going to be called, well, I'm just going to call this a logout, but you'll see later what we're going to do. We're going to add the user's wallet address, like I showed you in the demo. We're going to add that to this button. But for now, we're just going to call it the logout button, and we're going to give it kind of just all the same. Kind of. We're going to give it literally all of the same uh, whoop, no, uh, styling as the other button. I'm just flying through this, folks, flying through this part, because this is certainly an essential part, but it ain't the juiciest part. And for this one, we want to say uh current when current user is logged in and this button is visible and this again we do not want this button to be showing on page load so now those buttons are both hidden and they're in our wallet buttons group this image needs a name it's good to name your elements you know i i'm not i'm not always perfect at it i will admit but it's good to do it when uh, you remember to, and I try more and more and more to name my elements correctly. Now, let me just make sure that I get, did all that right. Yeah, okay. Now, there's two other things that are essential, 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 essential. Nothing will work without them, okay? And that is gonna be two elements that come from this plugin, the Web3 and MetaMask plugin. You can see I'm in the plugins tab here. Under installed plugins, I have the Web3 and MetaMask plugin. You can click add plugins, search Web3 and MetaMask, add the plugin to your thing. I've got an update. Look at this. There's new features I haven't even discovered yet. Uh, support for Polygon's Mumbai testnet. Okay, great things are on the, uh, the, the, the horizon for this team. Uh, I'm telling you, and those plugins, they're great. I love that those plugins are opening the world up to... Web3, so now that we've got that Web3 and MetaMask plugin installed, we have these elements, the Web3 and MetaMask element here under visual elements and the Web3 utils element. We need to put both of these on our page. And I'm just gonna toss these on the page that you might be thinking, what? And yeah, that's literally what you do. And they won't show up as anything. So they just don't look like anything. And that's uh, that's just how it works, folks. That's how these bubble uh, plugins work. And you can leave all this for our demonstration purposes. If your app is interacting with a specific token, you're going to want to put your token's network ID here. Uh, this is the network ID for Ethereum. So if you are using, let's say, Binance Chain, you're going to need the BSC network id if you're using polygon you're going to need a different network id and if you click enabled here it will trigger auto trigger the change request on metamask a little pop-up will pop up every time someone comes to your site and they don't have they're not connected to this network if you click enabled it, it's kind of annoying it's a total nag but it gets the job done if you really need to uh to force people to be connected to the right network otherwise leave that un checked and just put in the expect network for this example i'm just going to leave it ethereum and then we're going to add the web3 and utils element to the header as well and there's no additional settings needed there okay now the last thing that we need to do is add a pop-up to this page and you'll see how this pop-up comes in handy later but we're just going to add a pop-up container element to this it's not a page i keep calling it a page it's a reusable element but it feels like a page when you're just in the edit zone you know and we're going to call this pop-up install metamask sometimes i do a fake ivan on tech impression is that not cool i don't know but uh we're going to make this a column type and I don't think it needs to be so beefy. 
let's just say 300 by 200. Actually, I don't know, that's maybe not quite beefy enough. Let's say 350. Okay. This is our install MetaMask pop-up. And what we're going to put on here, just a couple little elements, okay? We're going to put an image. And we're going to center align it. And we're going to call it MetaMask logo. And, oh, and I've got this pre-uploaded as well because I already... Sometimes I do these ahead of time, like I did this one. Um, and I've, I've made a couple of these headers too. So, But I sometimes try to do these ahead of time so that they're not a total disaster when I end up doing them for you here when I'm actually filming. So we've got a little MetaMask logo. It looks so cute. We're going to give it a little bit of room up at the top. And we're going to put another visual element, a text element on here. And we're going to say, you need to install MetaMask. So this is what we're going to have pop up. If somebody tries to click the connect wallet button and they don't have MetaMask installed in their browser, I'm also going to show you what to do about mobile users who can't have the MetaMask extension installed in their browser and what you need to do for them You'll be seeing that in the workflow section here, just coming up in a couple minutes. We're almost done here. This, I'm going to make a learn more. Whoa, it doesn't need to be all kind of Learn more. I'm going to make this just a different color. And that's our little pop-up. Voila, we're going to give this a little bottom padding down there. Okay, that's all we need. And you'll see how we add a uh, workflow for this later as well. So we are done in the design tab now. So we're going to move on to the workflow. It is workflow time. So we've got a fresh workflow canvas to work from, and we are going to load this up with good stuff. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a custom event, okay? And this custom event is gonna be called Connect MetaMask. And this is simply going to use, I, I, by the way, I like to search for actions, okay? It speeds things up. Once you've gotten started to got, get once you've started to get familiar with the plugins and their actions, you can start to just search for things and it speeds up your workflow a lot. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to call that MetaMask. I should have given these better. These MetaMask elements have really bad names. I should call this header. Sorry, I'm being all super anal about this, but you know, I want to name them better. So we're going to connect to this element using this element in the header from that plugin. We're going to connect, and that's going to pop up that window, okay? Now, we want to do something else here. We then want to set a state, okay? And we're going to set, set a state for our reusable element, our entire reusable element. And we're going to call this state connecting. And this is going to tell our workflow what's what it what in what state are we in what part of of are we logging in are we connecting uh, we're not right now and you'll see how that plays in here in a second and uh, that's it for for this part now what we're going to do is we're going to now say once the Once the MetaMask plugin or extension, whatever you want to say, has connected and the current user, well, oops, let's go here. And the current user is logged out. And the overall let's see where is it the overall 
reusable elements connecting is yes. So we're now in that connecting state and, and we've connected to the, the, the meta mask. We've, we've connected to the wallet. Now we're going to sign that data and we're going to use that signed data as our password to log in or sign up. You're going to see this. It's crazy stuff. It's crazy stuff. So this is where we can can put whatever we want the user to sign, right? So for now, we've just got this little blurb that says, welcome to our demo. Please agree to our terms. Sign this message to agree to our terms, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Now, once that has been signed, so we're going to go down to custom here for events. Once the Web3 and MetaMask signed once that data has been signed we are then oh we also have to say and we still want to be in that connecting state right and we still want our user is technically logged out still right they've connected their wallet but they're still technically logged out and the state of this reusable element is connecting yes so we've signed that data. Now is when we're going to log the user in or sign them up, okay? So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna say, okay, if they are an existing user, we're gonna log them in. Now, how on earth do we know if they're ex an existing user? And actually, you know what I should start with is I should start with signing them up so that you can see this. Okay, so we're gonna sign them up. It's it's doesn't really matter which order you go in, but for this demo, it does, okay? So we're gonna sign the user up. Now, we are only um, going to sign this user up. Ready, are you ready for this? Well, let's first say this. What you're gonna use is the person's wallet address. And you're gonna have it append at your domain. So whatever your website domain is, okay? So this is gonna be the email that you sign the user up using. And check this out, their password is their signature. Oh, <laughs> is their signature when they signed, okay? This is super powerful. You, can allow your users to sign up without giving over any personally identifying information besides their wallet address. Sometimes I add another field in my user data to, uh, to store their wallet address. Totally optional, up to you. We're not gonna do that right now. Now here's, 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 a, uh, here's an essential step. You gotta put down here only when search for users whose email address equals let's copy this expression i'm lazy you can copy expressions guys i'm lazy copy this expression okay search for users whose email equals this existing and if this first item there's different ways you could do this you could do count but we're gonna say if this first item is empty and run this. So that's saying search for users with this wallet address at yourdomain.com. If there aren't any, sign them up. Now you'll see. Okay. When we go to log the user in, it's the same process. So I'm gonna paste that expression again. We're gonna go we're going to do this MetaMask sign signature. And right here, we're going to do something very similar. We're going to say only when do a search for users, right? Still users. And we're going to do the same exact thing where their email has to equal this email. And if the first item is not empty, meaning when it searches, there are users, there's we're presuming one user with this exact wallet at yourdomain.com. Then we're going to log them in. And then as soon as we're signing them up or logging them in, 
we're going to change the state of our header connecting to no, because now we're done. We've logged them in. So that's our basic login workflow. Now, let me give these all a color, okay, so that these are all connected. This is our little workflow for logging in. This is the hard stuff's over. Hard stuff's over, okay. So I want to add a couple little things, okay? I want to add some things to handle weird events, okay? One of them is if the wallet gets disconnected, okay? If the user's wallet gets disconnected from the app, I want to log them out, okay? Oops, not log in. I want to log the user out, okay? And also, if the user cancels, the signature, there it is, user canceled action. Sorry, it took me a second to find that one. Make this one red too. Then we want to set the state of the demo connecting to no, because now we're out of that. The user canceled. They don't want to connect. We're out of that workflow. We're interrupting that workflow. It's over. Cool. Okay, next we're going to do the button. On our app, oh, it's asking us to refresh. You remember, we click the button to initiate everything. So this custom event, Connect MetaMask, needs to be initiated by a button. And we're going to create a couple different events, possible events, for this button, okay? So when the button Connect Wallet is clicked, and this is our basic kind of uh, workflow here. Oops, sorry. And the Web3 and MetaMask header is installed. Okay, let's find this one. Now this means is yes. This means that when the user clicks the button, connect wallet, and they have the extension, the MetaMask extension installed, then we want to trigger our custom event called Connect MetaMask. That easy. Then it goes through that workflow. Boom, boom, boom. Let's make this one green. These are our buttons, okay? Now, I'm going to copy this, and I'm going to paste this again because I'm lazy. And I'm going to call this one. I'm going to uh, change, I mean, on this one. Just this. So when the user connects, uh, clicks button connect, but they don't have MetaMask installed, instead here, what we're going to do is we're going to show our pop-up install MetaMask. Remember that pop-up we made earlier that tells the user they need to install MetaMask? That's what we're going to do. And we've got one more button to make, okay? And I'm so I'm going to copy this one because I'm lazy. I'm going to paste it. I'm going to delete this. And this one is going to be very similar to the one we just made, but we're going to add something here, okay? It's going to be that the connected is no, and the current page width is less than 600 pixels. Okay, so we're just kind of making an assumption here, but it's a pretty reasonable assumption that if the, the page width of the device that the user is using is less than 600 pixels, they're probably on a mobile device, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to actually use this action in the Web3 utils element that we put into our, uh, our header earlier in the design tab. We're going to open the MetaMask app, which literally opens the MetaMask app on the user's device, their phone, 
their smartphone so that they can then connect using the built-in browser on, in the MetaMask app. Because MetaMask, uh, yeah, there's no extension for mobile browsers. There's no MetaMask extension. So that's the workaround for mobile browsers. Okay, three last events I want to add to this workflow before we're done. We're really, really close, okay? We've got most of the basics down here. So I want to add uh, for when we click our button called log out, we want to add that the uh, action that we're going to log the user out. And we're also going to do web three. We're going to uh, disconnect the wallet as well. So when log out is clicked, we're going to do that. The other thing we need to do is in our pop-up, we've got a button that is called, or I mean, not a button. We've got a text that's called learn more. And when that's clicked, we want to send people to the MetaMask website at MetaMask.io. So when uh, that pop-up pops up and they click learn more, they're taken to the MetaMask website so they can install MetaMask. The last thing I'm going to show you guys is just something I personally do that uh, I like to do to just keep the experience consistent across my website. And that's when I sign the user up, I log a wallet data item, okay? And I use the wallet address and I log that user's wallet. And why I do that, you'll see here, why I do that. And why I do that, you'll see here, is so that I can do an event when the page loads. We can check. We can say when the current user's wallet is not, does not match the wallet that's connected to MetaMask, to this, this MetaMask extension. So when those are not matching, what we're going to do is we're going to log the user out and disconnect MetaMask because there's some inconsistency in what's going on. Maybe they changed their wallet, and so we need to log them out and then have them go through the process of reconnecting their wallet and logging back in or signing up uh, with their other wallet. So this just kind of helps keep things, I think, personally, uh, a little cleaner in the overall experience for your user. Okay, and while I was editing this, I actually realized there were two things we didn't do, one of which I said we were going to do, and one of which I realized later was going to be real essential uh, so that you guys don't have any issues with this workflow like I did when I very, very first uh, tried to implement this on an app. The first thing is that you need to go to your data section, under data and privacy, you need to go to the user privacy rules and you need to make sure that your user's emails are searchable and can be found in searches. This login and sign up will not work right if you do not do this step. The other thing I want to show you is under the design tab and that is under this group wallet buttons the logout button that we call as we called it i want to show you how i did the conditional just in case this is something you want to do i made it so that when the user is logged in the text also showed the user's wallet address and this can be done pretty simply you go to web3 metamask wallet address and then what you want to do is you want to truncate two, four, and then and then manually just put dot 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 three little periods there, and then 
insert dynamic data, web3 and MetaMask header, wallet address, truncated from end to five. And now we've got a button that will display the user's MetaMask wallet address that is uh, the wallet that's connected, the address for that wallet. Now you can take this reusable header and you can go plop this on any blank page and you'll have this exact thing. And then you can put this at the top of every one of your pages and keep people logged in and connected across your Web3 app. So that is it for this demo. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments as always. And really can't wait to show you guys some of the upcoming tutorials we've got planned. And uh, so stay tuned, like, and subscribe for more of this content. Thanks, guys.